Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us for our panel discussion today with the Faces of Sola to talk about how to transition to a salon studio. I am seeing a lot of people still joining today's call, so I'm going to go ahead and give people a minute to log in while I talk through some housekeeping issues. So, um, as you know, this is being hosted on GoToWebinar. So there is a question box that you can type in questions or comments, whether you have questions about um, you know, technical issues or questions that you want to direct towards the panel. That's where you can communicate with me, Jenny, and I will be communicating with the rest of the panel during our webinar. Um, we also have Melissa Bennett on the webinar as well, who will be typing responses back to you if there are any issues you're having with sound or video or anything like that. You should be able to see all of our faces. So hi, everybody. If you cannot see us, if you're on a mobile device, you should be able to just swipe between all of our video screens and the slides. And then if you're on a tablet or a computer, you should be able to see us all uh, at the same time as you're seeing the slides. Um, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and I will introduce myself. My name is Jenny Wolf. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Sola Salon Studios, and I have had the incredible, incredible opportunity to be part of the Sola family since 2013. So I just celebrated my seven-year anniversary at Sola, and I uh, oversee all of our marketing and education programs, and I get to have all these awesome relationships with our Faces of Sola and so much of our Sola community, whether I've met you at or solo sessions or just on social media or um, you know in person at any of our faces of solo events it's been such an incredible honor to be part of this community and i just feel so grateful that i get to be part of this magical world of sola um with that i want to turn it over to our culture ambassador and director of industry relations kimmy bennett you may know her as kimmy kisses she actually just yesterday celebrated 16 years at SOLA. So, Kimmy, thank you so much for joining us. Kimmy was the first person to ever sign a lease at a SOLA studio, and she did so after seeing a giant construction zone with tape on the floor, and she just had a vision for her studio. So we're so grateful to Kimmy for being here, and I just wanted to give her a chance to, to say hello. Hello, everyone. It's such an incredible honor, not only to be Sola's culture ambassador, but to be on the, uh, this webinar briefly just to talk about being able to celebrate my 16 year anniversary. And, and I know many of you are on here for all your questions on what it's like to transition into a Sola Salon studio and being the first ever, it's like legendary. I just, I love that I get to say that. And and I want you all to know that when I did that, like Jenny said, it I didn't know what the doors were going to look like or the cabinets or the shampoo bowl. So what that means to me is that there's so much more than just those things. And, and as the 16 years came along, I evolved, my life evolved, my business evolved. And what was so wonderful is Sola evolved along with me. So it's so incredible today that we have these four panelists with Steven and Kelsey and Bianca and Ashley, who I love very dearly, but mostly they're my mentors too, because they have taken those 16 years of all those tools, all those resources, learning how to be better salon owners and we are all incredibly blessed to learn from all of them today. They're not just the next generation of the Sola. They're the ones that want to inspire all of you who can be. So I just want to truly thank all of you. I'm going to sign off so you can see their faces and, and listen to their voices. And I've got my notes. I can't wait to learn some more from these incredible, phenomenal Sola people. I love you all. Please reach out to me on the screen. That's my Instagram handle. I'm always here for you as well. Mwah. Have a great webinar. Kimmy. Kimmy, thanks so much for joining us. Kimmy and I always joke as we were getting ready to get ready for this panel. She said, you know, I think you should have some of the faces of Sola on who transitioned to Sola when Sola is what it is today because Kimmy's transition looks so different. And um, 
when we are ready to start hosting webinars for 16 years at SOLA and how to keep growing, we'll have more panels with Kimmy on it. So Kimmy, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Have a great time. So obviously, as we all know, the past several months have been unlike anything we could have ever predicted for 2020. The entire world has been turned upside down. I love this picture. Right when the world went into quarantine back in March, our 2020 Faces of Sola put this picture together. And it, it honestly, I, I saw it for the first time on social media and just immediately burst into tears. The comeback is always greater than the setback. Alone we are strong, but together we are stronger. Hashtag Sola Strong. And this just meant so much to me because it shows such strength in our community. It was so inspiring as into how we're all going to get through this together. Um, you know, and not just the solo community, but I think the entire beauty industry community. I think that everybody has gone through um, what is has been uh, tremendous change, but has also presented tremendous growth. And I think that we have a lot of people who are probably joining us today who are wondering, how do I start again? How do I keep dreaming? What do we do if you either had to, you know, close a traditional salon or lost a job? Or maybe you've always been looking at salon studios and you've always wanted to open your own studio space. And, um, you know, what we do know is that this, whether you call it the new normal or the now normal, um, I've heard some people say post-COVID, but I think a lot of us feel that we are in a COVID world. We are all still going through this pandemic. Um, but we know that this new normal is requiring more flexibility of your space, of your time, whether you have kids at home or clients who have certain specific needs, they are looking for a more private environment. Um, we do have a lot of our, most of our solo locations are reopened. We have some that are still dealing with closures, but we are starting to see what this light at the end of the tunnel is. And I don't mean the end of COVID, I just mean salons being open again and us learning how to adapt and adjust in this world. So, you know, I wanted to address lots of questions that have come up through our inquiries that have come through SOLA, through any of you who are joining us live and want to send in questions. Um, you know, we've been talking with our, our, our friends over at Modern Salon. If you joined this webinar because you got the word through Modern Salon, welcome. We've been talking to them about this career week and that they're hosting right now and what it really looks like to own your own business in a studio environment. Um, so anyway, today is going to be an open panel discussion with our Faces of Sola. And uh, we'll have some opportunity for open Q&A as well. And I'm excited to get started. So I want to introduce you to our panelists, who I just love and adore, so grateful for, um, Kelsey Morris, who's coming to us from Columbus, Ohio. Kelsey is a gloss boss with Gloss Genius. She's a sunlight balayage educator. She um, owns a clothing boutique. She has, uh, you know, kids and calls herself a stay-at-home mom. I don't even know how she does that, but Kelsey does it all. I'm so grateful to have you on today, Kelsey. Thanks, Jenny. We have, we have uh, Bianca Margolis, who uh, is the owner of B-Rose Studio in Chicago. Um, Bianca has just impressed me in so many ways. Um, you know, she's shared that in her 20s, she's a six-figure stylist in a city like Chicago. She's had major growth at SOLA. Um, we're so grateful to have her as one of our 2020 faces of SOLA. And Bianca, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Jenny. We also have Stephen Wren, who I just, I, I can never get enough of my time with Stephen. We've done podcast recordings. We've talked about mentorship. He mentors students in the Chicago area. As He's from Chicago as well. Um, he is a barber. He's moved from a smaller studio to a larger studio. He's accomplished so much, and he's always thinking about ways to give back. So, Stephen, thanks for being here today. And we also have Ashley Lance, who I'm another one that I'm just always impressed with. She just celebrated her daughter's one year birthday. And in her daughter's first year, she has taken her business to all new heights. She's one of our full genius ambassadors. She's currently part of the Thriver Society. She's an educator. And she we've also recorded podcasts and done 
some really fun stuff together and hosted actually recently a full of genius <laughs> webinar. So Ashley, thanks for being here today. Thanks, Jenny. So as we get ready to dive into questions for our panel, I want to open it up to you guys to share how you would describe your feelings in one word when you think about going independent. And I do this so that everybody can sort of get on the, the, a similar page and hear what other people are feeling. So if you could put one word into how you would describe your feelings into our question box, I will start reading some of the answers out loud. So I'm seeing freedom, excited, uncertain, nervous, excited, more freedom, ready, nervous, all right, they're still coming in, but you know, this is what I'm seeing a lot of scared, excited, nervous. I see the word taxes, um, which isn't a feeling, but I know it has to do with fear, fear of taxes and managing your business. We're gonna cover all of that. Um, afraid, freedom, apprehensive. Um, excited, let's see. I love this, and I'm going to end on this one. Well, I don't have one word, but my parachute won't open until I jump. So Aww. I love that. And I think that, you know, it, it, it's really great for us to all line and you guys to kind of hear what other people are experiencing because you realize that you're really not alone in those kinds of feelings. And, uh, you know, with that said, I want to start by going through our entire panel and kind of hear what was happening in your life and in your career when you decided to go independent. Um, I'll go ahead and start with Steven on this one. You know, I was actually thriving in a successful, busy, known barbershop, but I was at a career, at a point in my career where I kind of wanted more for my business and I wanted to kind of cater to my clients a different way. So for me, it was just time for a move and opening up my own full shop at that time. It just wasn't ideal. So coming into the solar salon suite life, that was, that was the next step for me. I love that. Ashley Lance, how about you? I was managing the commission salon that I had been at for seven years and I had an opportunity to do a little bit more traveling for, as an educator. And I just really needed to be in a position where I was in more control of my schedule and less in control of other people. And Kelsey, I know when you first decided to go independent, you were in a different salon studio concept before coming to Sola. So let's, let's go to where you were when you just went out independent for the first time. Um, when I first went independent, I had a young child at home and I really needed more flexibility. Um, so I was at a different salon suite concept, and when the solo opened up in our area, um, I came over and just loved the idea of not just being on your own, but actually having a community, and I found that with Sola, there was an entire community behind you. Um, so that definitely made my transition a lot easier and made the decision pretty easy to make. And Bianca, how about you? I kind of was in the position of over seven years, two different salons just kind of always trying to fit into that traditional salon mold. Um, it was never really for me. And I just kind of wanted a space that I could just be unapologetically myself, um, not only personally, but obviously with my career. And so when solo was available, it was amazing that I could open something and kind of create the vibe to attract the tribe I want. And solo gave me that opportunity. So it was like a no brainer. I hear a lot of similarities between your stories that really what you were looking for was kind of that control back in your life, whether it was control to manage your schedule so that you could be with your family or just control of your own destiny and your own opportunity for growth in your own career, whether becoming an educator or just focusing on your career as, you know, behind the chair. Um, so you went on on your own, but I know it's never easy to make that leap of faith. Um, you all had your own fears when it came time to opening. Um, what were your biggest fears in opening your, your studio? We'll start with Ashley. 
I was really afraid that none of my clients were going to follow me or that I wouldn't retain enough to where I was able to pay my rent um, and that I was throwing myself into a situation that wasn't going to go well for me. But that's not what happened at all. <laughs> How about you, Stephen? I was so concerned that my clients wouldn't wouldn't adapt or wouldn't like the sweet setting, you know, because the barbershop atmosphere is something that a lot of guys, you know, they, they look forward to that experience in the room, joking and conversating and stuff like that. So I was afraid that my clientele wouldn't adapt to what I was trying to do and the intimate, private, exclusive, customizable grooming experience that I wanted to offer them. I, I was afraid that, that, that they wouldn't like it. Mm hmm and Kelsey, you were in a new location. You were building a book of business. So what kind of fears were you experiencing? Uh, well, you know, the biggest fear, obviously, is from a financial aspect, you have to be able to afford what you're doing. Um, and I was taking, you know, going to have a bigger payment for rent. Um, so I was like, just wanted to make sure that my clientele would be able to support it. Um, and obviously, when you're starting working from the bottom up, um, when I came here with no clients and, you know, still in the process of building, you know, you're just hoping that you can make it. And um, the good thing is Solo offers a lot of tools for us to help us grow. And so I found that to be pretty easy, a lot easier than I thought it would be. So as long as you're dedicated to it, you can actually do it. That's great. And Bianca, how about you? What kind of fears did you experience? I would say, honestly, I feel kind of across the board with everybody. It's really similar. Um, mine was just like sheer failure, like in all different aspects. It's really scary, like going out on your own and doing something. I mean, I'd never owned a business before. So I think my biggest thing was like just making sure that my business succeeded. I just never wanted to fail, whether that be, you know, hair, financially, whatever. Um, so that was definitely a huge fear of mine. A lot of fear of failure. I think that as humans, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, right? And we don't want to take a leap of faith unless we know, but none of us have a crystal ball of, of what life is going to look like. I can tell you, even though I don't own a studio and I'm not a hairdresser, I also have my own full of story and I could never have predicted what happened with, with me over the last seven years at Sola and the opportunities it's presented me. But so your fears, a lot of them are, are relatable. Um, did your clients follow you? <laughs> a, a, absolutely. My my clients followed and they love they love the transition. And I'm also gonna say that our clients choose to spend time with us. So there's a relationship and a bond that grows there way past the service that we're offering them. And they were just so excited and happy to support me in this journey. And I've gained so many new clients that didn't even know these kind of concepts exist. So not only have I brought on the people that have been with me for years, but so many brand new clients are loving the experience that they get at Solar Salons. I think your clients get a more premier service with you one-on-one, -on -one, and if you're the reason why they go to, to have a service with you anyway, now they don't have to, you know, interact with all the other people and they get that one-on-one -on -one experience for you and you can really focus on what that experience is for them um, to keep them coming back. So I hear this a lot, um, you know, that um, the fear of are my clients going to like it and just, yeah, remember that they love that, that time with you. Um, all right. So I do want to talk about building your business and attracting new customers. A lot of questions came in about marketing. How do I build a book of business? I think that, you know, if you if you are coming to Sola and you already have an established clientele, obviously your fear is, are they going to follow me? But what if you don't have that established clientele? How do you keep building? So, um, Bianca, can we start with you on this one? How do you, yeah. how do you build your business? I would say Sola has some really great, like, marketing tips. Um, using all the tools that Sola gives really, really, really like just help across the board. But one thing I've noticed for myself personally is I've gotten super involved with my community, um, Facebook groups, making sure you're like going to local events. People love to like hear about you. And especially for me where I am in South Loop in Chicago, 
um, we have a specific group to the area. And it's cool because then I'm attracting like the people in my area as well. And we're able to like talk about the new restaurants, talk about what's happening. And then I think people get even more comfortable, which helps you even like grow your clientele even, like bigger because they're going to refer you to more people when you're kind of creating those really nice close relationships. Ashley, how about you? Um, a lot of what Bianca said is pretty much what I have been doing recently, trying to keep everything very local by making sure I'm in a lot of the different Facebook groups in my community. Uh, I found that a lot of my referrals, because I was focusing really hard on Instagram and making sure I was using hashtags for my city and everything like that. And over the last, I would say six to eight months, a lot of my referrals were coming in through the Nextdoor app. I would ask people where they heard about me and they would say, oh, I asked for someone who was good with curly hair, someone who was good with color, and you know, so-and-so brought up your salon. So, so that's why I started focusing a little bit more on people that were in my like one to two mile radius. And it's kind of created a little bit of a, an army for me. And I really like it. They refer a lot more people to me and it's making this entire pandemic situation a lot easier than I thought it would be. Thank you. Steven, you blew me away when you told me you had, what is it, over 500 clients? No, yeah. Knocking on 500 clients, and one of the biggest biggest things that I do is I do business where my business is. So that means the restaurants in my area know about my business. The big box stores, I shop at those stores because those are potential clients and old clients. And so if their managers, if their employees can drive to that area, they can also frequent my business. If their customers can attend events, shop, or buy food at those businesses, they're in the same area with my business. So for almost seven years, I've done business where my business is, and that's how I've been able to grow. I love all these references to what you can do local, to really bring it local, because I think that we can do a lot on social media with hashtags and trying to reach, but this is a lot of this is about the local connections that you're making. I mean, the Nextdoor app, I know Yelp can be incredibly powerful. Um, you know, Stephen Shopping, at where in the area where you work as opposed to where you live, now you're connecting with people who when they get off work, it's more convenient for them to, to drive over to your salon. Um, Kelsey, a couple people sent in, how do you build a book if you don't have a book of business? And I know that that was something you went out on your own in an area that was pretty far from your original salon. So you really did start from the ground up. How did you start to build your book? Um, Wow, there's so many there's so many ways I could go with this because I have so much to say. But I would say to start, the first thing I did was um, definitely look. Uh, Bianca talked a little bit about Facebook groups, so I looked not just on like normal Facebook groups, but I actually approached moms. So I tried to find the moms groups and really went into those. Um, and you like moms love to like talk to each other about like who does your hair, like how do I get out of the, away from these kids. So those were really good for me. Um, and then when I started with Sola, um, one thing to really know is we've talked a lot about tools and what Sola has to offer. Um, it's really important to make sure you have a really good Sola Pro page and a really good, and you're updated on your Sola Genius. If you use Sola Pro and Sola Genius, you become part of a search network that just started and you, I mean, I can't remember what the number is, Jen, you'll have to tell us after this, like, I don't know, X amount of people are looking for a new stylist every day in your area. So, and they're always searching these, these pages um, and they will bring you up and give your availability. So I got a new client, a lot of new clients from there. Um, and then a referral program. I know this is old school and everybody's like, oh, that's been around a lot, but I would do a spin on it. And when I had new clients come in, I would make these little gift bags and they're like my new client welcome packs. And I would go and shop all the little, the local hair stores, like their clearance rack, and buy like hair masks, just a couple little things to put in these bags with a coupon for the next visit and then a referral card. And I would say word of mouth was the fastest way um, for me to build a business. And pretty soon I was so busy, I didn't know what to do with myself. So, and if you're slow, instead of just sitting there, go hand out postcards, pop them in people's mailboxes, stand at the mall and hand them out. I mean, you just got to, Gotta do whatever you have to do to get the client. Yeah, and there's a lot of cross-promotional opportunities at Sola as well. So making sure that you not only 
hand out business cards in whatever shopping center your sola is or shop there, like Stephen says, but actually hand your business cards up and down the hallways at sola because there might be people who are working in your sola that have full books and can't take new clients, or they just specialize in something totally different than you do. So they might not be comfortable with the kind of service. So if somebody reaches out to them, you might get referrals internally as well. Um, Kelsey, what, what Kelsey was mentioning is what we call Book Now. It's the booking engine on solasalons.com. Um, just last month, we had nearly 1,500 bookings through, through Book Now. We're getting lots and lots of more inquiries. I remember reaching out to Ashley when we were, you know, just a few months into Book Now, or maybe, you know, maybe about six months to 10 months into Book Now. And I said to Ashley, how are things going for you? And could you, you know, shoot a little video for me about your experience with Book Now that I can share with some of our owners because they want to hear how it's going for our community. And Ashley said, well, actually, I got so many inquiries that I had to close my book. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's yes. a good problem to have. I think because Sola has over 520 locations nationwide and locations in Canada and we're even in Brazil, there's a huge reputation backing you up with a company like this. I know that with this, over 15,000 people working at Sola, Sola has a reputation of that's where a lot of top hairdressers and beauty professionals work. So we get a ton of consumer traffic to our website who are shopping. They're looking for professionals. So you can actually set up your own solo web page. It can drive to a booking site, you know, our booking engine book now for any of our solo genius users. Um, and that can be really effective in, in helping to build your business. Which brings us to technology. We did get some questions in on how do you actually handle booking, you know, and, and, and business management? Because technology can do a lot more for us than just the 24-7 booking. You know, there's you're wearing a lot of hats. You're a receptionist. You're a bookkeeper. You're your own marketing director. Um, you have to run your numbers and understand kind of where your profit, where profitability is coming from. Um, so I want to start with this one with Ashley Lance, who's one of our Sola Genius Ambassadors, because at Sola, we do have a partnership with Gloss Genius, and we provide a version of the app that we call Solo Genius, and uh, it can help you with a lot of these things. So, Ashley, I kind of want to hear about your experience with, with business management. I literally refer to Solo Genius as my personal assistant. Like, it's saved in my phone as, with, like, a little kissy emoji, and my husband always gets mad because he's like, I think you like Solo Genius more than you like me, because it just does so much for me. It, gives me analytics. It reminds my clients when their appointment's coming up. It lets me know when they've canceled. Uh, it makes everything super easy. At this point, they even have their own QuickBooks integrated with the app. So you can put all of your expenses in there and it prints out an expense report. So it makes tax season super easy, which is something that everyone had to deal with this last week or this last couple months. Um, in general, what it does for me is it just gives me my extra time back because as everyone on this panel can agree with, I'm sure, is that when you become a business owner, it doesn't stop, you don't clock out. And even though that's true, Sola Genius or any sort of booking app that you're using to help manage your business is gonna give you as much extra time as you can possibly get. And I know that that was really important to you over this last year as you were adjusting to life as a mama. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Kelsey, you are also an ambassador on the Gloss Genius side. So, so tell me about kind of your experience with with technology. Well, ironically, I was one of the first people to actually ever use Gloss Genius um, when they first started the app. I was looking for something. I had tried Vergaro and Stylesheet and some other some other software, and just didn't find anything that really was more the most customizable that really made my business uh, what I wanted it to be. Um, so when Gloss Genius, Solo Genius came out, I just fell in love with it um, from the fact that you can build a custom website. Um, I love being able to show my clients like my brand through this website. Uh, you're not just getting a booking site, you're getting a literal website and it, you can customize it and make it your brand. So I really like that. Um, I love the way that you can, um, like she said, custom, or I said customize everything. And the tax thing, actually, that was like the biggest thing this year. I just started using it, the, that, and I'm like obsessed with all this. You can save all your expenses right on the app. Take pictures of your, your receipts. You're not holding on to receipts anymore. 
Um, and also with the automated text reminders, I found out that um, my clients, they no longer had excuses for not showing up to their appointment. Like, well, you, I know I harassed you with, a, with an email and a text. So um, you got to show up for your appointment. Um, so those were the main things that really, you know, like Ashley said, gave me back a lot of time. Um, so much more freedom, flexibility to create my brand in the way I wanted it to be. Um, so I just love it. I'm just so glad that we have that tool. It really helps make things easier. Well, I can share that my experience as a customer, um, how important it is to be able to book online on your time because, you know, I, I, I like to have that in my control as well. But the thing that's great about using a tool like Full of Genius is that you still have control over your books. You have to, you can create a setting where you have to, where you have to approve the appointments, so they don't actually own your time they get to request your time and then you get to approve it. And if you're really not into online booking, you can actually disable that and still utilize all the other features. Um, I know Bianca also uses that program, but Steven has his own way and we still love him just as much. Um, a couple of people have sent in the message, do I have to switch? Or, you know, I have my own systems. And no, you do not have to switch. That's the thing that we really honor at Sola is your freedom to run your business the way that works best for you. We just want to provide the tools to you. So if you already have your, your way of running your business and you want to have that seamlessly transition, know that you, you totally have, you know, you, you can make that decision for yourself. But just know that we do have a platform for you. So I, I want to switch gears now and talk about kind of making this transition. I think that there's this notion of, oh my gosh, there's going to be so much overhead to get started. So I want to hear from your experience. Was it a big investment to get started? And kind of what did you invest in to make your studio your own? So I'll, I'll start with Bianca on this one. So I met with my franchisee in May. Um, it was literally on like a Monday and I signed my lease by Friday because I was totally sold, but I was fortunate in the sense that they were still building my Sola. So I had about six months to start like buying things and saving up and all that. Um, other than like getting like your things, I mean, Sola gives you chair, shampoo bowl, cabinetry. You really just need the money for like your product, your color, like all of those things, because I feel like the decoration and all that is super fun, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary to finally open. Those are things that you can invest in over time. I'm kind of a person that I would prefer to like save for something nicer than just like buy a bunch of like small, cheaper little things. Um, so I've actually gone from a single to I'm in a double now. And I made like a lot of changes when I moved to my double and investments once I did move. But honestly, your startup cost is really just your basic necessities because Sola makes sure you're pretty set up across the board. I mean, they paint your studio for you too. Um, so that, I mean, as long as it's painted and you have your things and your clients, you're pretty good to go just to begin with. Yeah, we've had a lot of stories of people who, um, whether they um, lost a job or decided to leave a salon for any sort of personal reason, you know, they could be at Sola on Thursday taking a tour and cutting hair by Saturday. And like you said, it takes time to collect all the things that, that ends up becoming your studio. Steven, yeah, go ahead. I had no idea how it operated. So I didn't know if we needed a first month and last month rent. And after my tour, I asked him, I was like, so what's the damage? What, what do I owe to get started? And when he told me, I was like, oh, I got that in my pocket right now. Let's let's go ahead and get this thing started. So there's very, very little startup cost. And for me, I just had to upgrade my barber chair. That was the only thing that I upgraded my barber chair and, and added everything else along the way. Very low to get started. Yeah, go ahead, Kelsey. So I think from a stylist perspective, or especially a hairstylist perspective, we um the biggest startup cost I think for us is like color and back bar and things of that nature. Um, and you worry about having to have everything um, and it can be expensive, but I will say like a piece of advice, something that I learned pretty early on was to go into the salon supply stores and talk to them about intro kits. Um, and there are some really good discounts and really good deals for you. And they'll provide you with bowls and, and aprons and brushes and things along with all the color that you need for the color swatch book. So I know that can feel really overwhelming, 
Um, but I have talked to so many people who, who said that just going in to the supply store and talking to someone really eases your fears about that. Um, and then you'll be ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to talk about what's going on right now in our COVID world that we're living in, because what I've seen is there's a lot of um, consumer demand and different consumer expectations of what they want in an experience going to the salon that might be a little bit different. And what we're seeing is that the studios are really lending itself pretty well for that kind of experience for a customer. Um, so I kind of want to hear about your experience in reopening after COVID. And I've also heard of a lot of people at Sola who are getting more and more new customers. Um, so the question is, how does your studio provide a preferred environment for you and your guests during the COVID, current COVID-19 pandemic? Who wants to start on this one? Ashley, go ahead. So I've gotten literally the most amazing feedback from my clients when it comes to this situation. Um, it's a little bit of pressure, but it's also a huge compliment when I have people that come in and they're like, this is the first time I've left my house since April. And to know that they're comfortable coming into my space versus like even the grocery store, that just really is a huge testament to the way that we're able to handle things when we're controlling our own environment and um, the disinfecting, the sanitation, and even down to the hallways in all of the Sola uh, locations. I mean, I can speak for mine, I can't speak for all of them, but we have our doors locked so the clients have to contact us directly in order to get into our room. So that gives us the maximum amount of time to make sure that we're disinfecting and sanitizing everything properly. We don't have people congregating in the hallways. It just makes everyone a lot more comfortable knowing that we're taking it as serious as we really need to, to make sure that this isn't prolonged any further than it already has been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say, like I've had a lot of the same, but I've also had people just saying how much more comfortable they are being one on one versus being a room or a salon with like 10, 20 people at a time, whatever that may be. Of course, I don't know how it pens state by state, but I know here in Chicago, I think it's 50 percent of the people that the building allows is the occupancy now. So that kind of right there, I mean, that's still a lot of people if you haven't left your house since April. So. I would say a huge compliment for my clients as well was like, they were like, I feel like your salon was already like super clean before, but like it's even cleaner now, but they have that peace of mind knowing that like you're in control of the environment and you're making sure that those highly touched surfaces are always clean for them, that you're going to be wearing a face mask. You're going to be taking temperatures. You know, it's sad. We can't do food and dr or drink service and snacks and magazines that were those like add-ons, but like, I've done little things like give them a little extra head massage at the shampoo bowl or something like that to still make the experience great. But they just like are so much more at ease knowing it's you and them and you don't have to deal with like the madness of like, well, where was that person? Where was that person? So I really like that. And I think clients, I'm getting more and more requests too because they just love that. I As much as we love the control of the environment, I think the clients do as well. Yeah, go ahead, Stephen. You know, during the shutdown, we were considered a non-essential business, but we are so essential helping everybody navigate this next phase. And there's been so many times in my first month where I've been the first car ride for families or the first place that someone has actually gone. And for a lot of dads and moms or whoever the adult person is bringing the kid or just my adult clients, it's like one of the first adult conversations that they're having. So we're so essential in this next phase where everybody's just coming into this post COVID, now normal, the new normal. It's, it's so essential what we're doing and what we're able to provide. And it's so much more than just a service. Yeah, and I, I think that, you know, because one of the first places that I went was to get my hair done. Um, I haven't been out in too many, too many businesses, but I definitely was ready for a trip to the salon. And what I think is so great about these one-on-one -on -one environments is that you co completely control the dialogue from the time that they book and the time that they're preparing for their appointment all the way through the appointment. And Kimmy and I talked about this. It'll be coming out soon on a podcast episode, but where you, you really can incorporate um, 
conversation about, okay, this cape is going over here and I'm going to get you a fresh one. And here's all my fresh towels. And I want to let you know that this, you know, comb is going into the barbicide. And, um, you know, you, you can actually control that dialogue fully without having other people that are sharing that message with your clients um, to make them really feel comfortable. So one other thing I want, I want to talk through is, uh, you know, there's questions that come in on, am I going to feel alone? How am I going to stay educated and inspired? And that's been a huge focus of mine at, over my time, you know, at SOLA over the last seven years is making sure that SOLA continues to build really strong partnerships with the industry, that we provide education for you at SOLA, that we have tons of inspiration through our blog and our podcast and our SOLA Pro app. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, but um, at SOLA, we have a lot, but there's so much in the bigger beauty industry as well, everywhere you turn. So um, I will start with Ashley Lamp for this one. Um, a lot of it depends, I think, on where, what kind of education I'm looking for. I'll reach towards podcasts. I'll reach towards the SOLA Pro app, and I'll go and I'll look at um, what classes are available. I'll go to the Salon Centric app and see what they have coming up. The one of the silver linings of this entire pandemic is that everything has gone virtual. So when I'm falling asleep at night, I can literally like log on to something, put my AirPods in and I can learn as I'm drifting off to sleep, which is really great. But currently, like you had mentioned in the very beginning, I'm part of the Thriver Society, which has been really huge for the kind of education I have been wanting to really funnel in on in the last year, which is more business related. Being an educator, like you guys can also agree with, is you get a lot of technique education. So one thing I really wanted to focus on was business and branding and marketing and making sure that, um, especially right now, going into a post-COVID situation, that I was really making the changes that I needed to make within my business to fine tune everything I've worked on for the last four years at SOLA. Yeah, I think that there's this idea of, um, you know, how am I going to stay connected and are there still opportunities to grow? And, um, you know, I, I did a podcast recording this morning with our first solo stylist up in Canada, Roxanne, and she and I had a great conversation about all these new things that she wants to do with her career. And, and one of the things, she just became a, a educator for Sun Life Balayage. Kelsey, I know that's something you do as well. Um, you know, being in a studio really gives you freedom to do all these other things from outside behind the chair too that can help keep you inspired. So, yeah, I think it's, um, it definitely gives you lots of freedom um, to focus on other things that you might love. So like, as I'm getting older, I'm finding myself wanting to back away from behind the chairs a little bit, it, get, it gets tiresome. So going into the education, uh, becoming a, you know, a brand ambassador, an educator, if those are your goals, you definitely have the freedom to do it. I love it. So I, I'm going to give, we have a few minutes that we can answer some open Q&A. I see a lot of questions coming in that I actually am going to address here in a minute when I go through the steps to getting started. But some of the, one of the questions I want to address um, that Stephen, I'm going to pass over to you is um, how is renting a salon suite compared to booth rental? All right. So, so when you're on booth rent, so you're at your, just like with commission, you're, you're operating your business within a business. And for five years, I operated my business within a successful and thriving business. When I did my tour with Sola and I asked the question of how much is the cost? The cost was the exact same as my booth rent. So I operated at my thriving business within a thriving business. So I had the confidence to take the same amount that I was paying into my own studio suite. I started with the small one and that gave me the confidence to know if I can do it there, I can do it here by myself on my own. It was a smooth transition. Yes, absolutely. Um, let's see. We just got a question in, how do you manage everything inside of a studio? Does it feel small for everything going on? I take this one. Take this um, one? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll take it. So uh, being in your studio, does it feel small? I think that's actually a really good question. And there's two ways to look at it. Um, I think right now, especially during this COVID thing, like there's kind of safety in that small area. And, you know, we all want to keep our circle, circle small right now. And our space is small just because that's what least, the least amount of exposure. So I don't feel small in my sola. I actually feel um, that it's the perfect amount of space for what I'm trying to do. Um, and even outside of COVID, like, I love having all my stuff right there with me. And, you know, there, it, I swear it takes a lot less time to walk back to a dispensary and come back and forth. You know, it's right there and you're just doing everything there. So it probably cuts out a lot of time. Um, and honestly, when you really come down to it, how much stuff do you actually need? Um, you really don't need a ton of stuff in your space. And we have so much storage um, that I feel like it's not cluttered. It's just what you need. And um, it's the perfect amount of space. Great. So, um, Bianca, I think you're in, in a larger studio. That's, is that right? I'm in a double now, yeah. So you're in a double, so you have a space. One of the questions that came in, are you able to double book clients with COVID going on and how do you manage that? Um, so I traditionally don't really like love to double book anyways, because I look at it as like just the way I run my business, my clients pay for my time. So I really like to enjoy that time with them and give them that one-on-one -on -one experience. Another reason in coming to Sola, um, in a pinch, I've absolutely done so. I get it, things happen. People need stuff with COVID in my current location. We are not, it's supposed to be like one-to-one -one, um, and I'm just not doing so because I think again, it's just something, my space is large enough, but it isn't large enough where I would feel comfortable having two people in at one time, just for the like health and safety of myself and my guests. Um, but I would say I don't see that. I think if there was a way we could figure out to do that safely. I would totally be open. Like people have even like mentioned, like maybe trying to put up like a barrier or something like that. Um, those are options. If that's something you do, if people do double book, I mean, I see tons of salons doing it. I don't see why you couldn't at your Sola. It's just, again, kind of at the discretion, I think of your location as well as what you and your guests are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it really depends on where you are and what the rules and regulations are in the, the city that you're in because, yeah, in some places it's, it's much uh, stricter. It also depends on what the COVID rate is like where you live and how comfortable you are because it's so important um, not just to make your client feel safe, but you have to feel safe. You have to protect yourself in, in all of this as well. Um, there was uh, one question that came in, if I, you know, can I also offer uh, nails, facial waxing, and other services, can I be a studio that does it all? And the answer is yes, you have total control over your space. Do any of you offer services that might be a little bit different, you know, now that you're on your own and, and controlling all that? I offer a handful of brow services. So I do henna tinting, I do brow lamination. That's something I just recently brought on actually, because going back to education, it was something I was interested in, added it to my, uh, my service menu and people were really into it. And I haven't found that I've had a struggle with the space. And there's multiple people in my studio. There's two different hairstylists that also do nails. So they have their own manicure station set up as well. And then there's another stylist that does eyelash extensions. So she, her seating area is a reclining chair. So she moves that out when she does lash services. So it's definitely possible to offer, or offer more than one service. Great. I think I'm going to answer several questions right now going through the steps. So if you are interested and you want to know what to do next, I'm going to go through all the steps to getting started and then we'll come back to our panel to close it out. So we want to help you open your business, hashtag Sola Strong. We know that change can be scary, especially in the face of a global pandemic. We have tons of resources available to you that are gonna help you to get uh, set up for a strong opening. So the first step is contacting your local Sola. There have been a ton of questions that have come in to say, how much is rent, how much is rent? You're sharing your, your areas where you are. Um, the best thing to do is to contact your local leasing manager because rent is 
different based on where you are in the country and not just in the country, but in, you know, Denver, Colorado, where I'm located, there's 13 solo locations with all different rents, just depending on where you are and what part of town. So you'll want to contact your local SOLA, send in a message, um, and go take a tour. And if you're not comfortable walking through the hallways right now, um, whether for confidentiality reasons or, you know, health reasons, they'll do virtual tours as well. So if you go to our website and go to locations, you will see all of our locations in the U.S. and Canada. So we have four open locations in Canada. Our first location just opened in Calgary, and we have three in Toronto. And then in the U.S., we are all over, and we are opening almost a location a week. So, or more, I should say more than one location a week. So definitely keep an eye on our, our website and make contact with your local leasing manager. The second step is to think about all the systems that you might want to have in place. I've seen some questions coming in. How do I see Sola Genius and what technology is available to me? There's trial periods that you can use through Sola Genius if you want to get to know the program. But just think about all the things that you're going to be doing now running your own business. So we know that software has been created to help you work more efficiently. We also really want to help you market your business. So at Sola, we have our own app called Sola Pro. It's really our education app. We have over 120 brands featured on the Sola Pro app with tons of video education. Um, we also have a lot of deals and special programs for Sola. So a lot of brands have come to Sola to say we want to offer something special to the Sola community. So you can find all that shop through Sola Pro as well. And it's also where you go to manage your own Sola web page. So you also have access to your very own web page. So I know that you know many people want to have their own website that's more personally branded and a little bit more robust, and that's great too. But you don't have to have that. Again, like if you're in a situation where you can't invest the time or the money right now in, in, in doing all of that, we make it really easy. And we also get tons and tons of traffic. I think we had over a million page views on our website last month. So you benefit from some really, really strong search engine optimization. Um, Sola Genius is an awesome technology, and you also will be featured through our book now, uh, Search Engine, when you utilize Sola Genius. So the next step is to think about your product. So I think that this can be an opportunity that a lot of people unfortunately miss because there's this perception of I'm not a salesperson or I don't want to sell retail, I really just want to focus on the hair. But think about when you're one-on-one -on -one with your customer that it really is part of their experience. Experience is part of the customer journey, and you actually get to keep 100% of those profits. So whether you were in a traditional salon as the owner or an employee, you, no matter what, are making more profit now from selling retail. So you really want to think about what product fits the culture and the needs of your guests and fits the price point that they are willing to shop within. So think about what a uh, you know a partner a brand that you can carry that provides great education and great programs for you, um, and start thinking about where you'll get that product because I know with COVID there's different shopping experiences as well right now. So you'll want to get in touch with your local distributor early to make sure that they have all the products for you, um, and you know you can also like I said look at some really great programs through Solo Pro. So uh, that's or I call, um, you know, the stuff that feels sort of scary. I, like I said earlier, when somebody sent in the word taxes about how they feel, um, at Sola, we, we try to make this really easy for you to get all this paperwork filed and all the businessy stuff done. So the great part about joining a community like Sola with a franchisee and, and a local manager that's done all this research for you. So they actually give you a startup manual that has all the forms, all the steps, everything that you need to follow um, and so you know you can think about what your business name is and then file everything that you need um, think about your schedule I've seen a several questions coming in what time of day can I access my studio um, it's 24 7 I don't recommend that you work 24 7 but I do know that you know you might have days that you need to work evenings you might have a high profile client that needs to get in at four o'clock in the morning because they have a, a shoot that day. Um, you know, I, I've heard it all. We have a lot of um, celebrity stylists at Sola as well. So you do have control over your schedule. Um, and, you know, think about just 
how you want to set your schedule, set your prices, and then what numbers you want to focus on so that you can build your business. So step five, I go from scary stuff to the fun stuff. Think about what you want your studio to feel like. Think about what that music is like, what that vibe is like. You know, when you take a tour at Sola and you walk through, you're going to feel like you're in like a Disney world of salons. Like everybody has their own vibe. It's like going through the Epcot Center. You know, you get, you get all these different experiences. You get to build that totally yourself. So start looking through our Instagram, connect with all these, these awesome uh, spaces of Sola on our webinar as well and see what they're, they've got going on in their studios. Um, and then the, the final step is thinking about when you do open your studio, getting the word out. So connecting with your customers, getting that text blast out, starting to think about what, how you want to post it on social media. Um, but there's uh, a lot of fun in getting the word out, and your guests will be so excited to support you. So we do have a guide on our website. If you go to solasalonstudios.com slash going independent, you can download a guide, and it's a much, much more robust version of what I just zipped through. Um, we also have a blog. Um, if you go to our blog and look for the blog post titled Best Practices to Open Your New Salon Studio, hashtag Sola Strong, it's going to link you to all the different places, all the different videos, podcasts, and blogs that you can read so that you can uh, get ready to open your studio. So with that, I want to end on a final question to our panel. So I'm going to read the question, and then I'm going to put their uh, Instagram handles up so that you can connect with them. But my question is, what advice would you give to someone who's considering going out on their own? So I'll just go in order of, of this, and I'll, I'll leave their Instagram handles up here so you guys can all connect with them while we go through that. So Kelsey, what last advice would you have? Um, my last advice would definitely be to just have one minute of bravery. Um, it just takes one minute to sign your lease, and I promise if you follow through and you believe in yourself, you're going to do great things. I love that, Bianca. I My biggest thing since starting at Solo was, Joe, not waste another moment of your time staying comfortable because every moment you just stay in that comfort zone you're wasting your time that you could be doing like the things that you were meant to be doing and like truly going on and being unapologetically yourself and just creating amazing things for yourself in your future. Steven, how if, about you, last advice? If, if you're comfortable, jump over that hurdle. If you're fearful, like pretty much we all were, jump over that hurdle. If you're afraid, jump over that hurdle. If you're doubting yourself, jump over that hurdle and run through the tape of doubters. Jump over the hurdle, I love it. Ashley? I would say don't worry if you don't feel like your studio is 100% perfect. If it doesn't match what's in your mind, still open up, take your first client, get your client's feedback and really get a feel for the true vibe that you're wanting to put out there with your studio. It'll happen over time and then it's gonna change eight more times, mm -hmm. but it'll happen. <laughs> Uh, I'm so grateful for this panel. Thank you guys so much. I did want to just touch on one thing because I did zip through the steps pretty quickly and, and there's been a couple questions of what's included in the studio rent. So I just wanted to, to touch on that. So it's an all in one weekly price that includes Wi-Fi utilities, all the, you know, we take care of all the common areas. Again, your rent is going to be different where you are. Um, you do bring all your own supplies, so your, your back bar, your color, your tapes and towels, all of that is, um, you know, an, an additional expense for you. Um, but in, in the weekly rent, you do have all the Wi-Fi and utilities. There's no hidden costs, and, and I, don't, I don't know if any of you have anything to add to that. I think that makes no? it that much easier to, like, open your salon is, like, that's something people also worry about is like, sure, like we're saying you need like the basic things, product, all that, but like not having to worry about like water, electric, why that's such a huge relief as well. Mm -hmm. 
I love it. You guys, I, I'm just so grateful again to you. I did have a, one person ask how you can connect with me. I'm also on Instagram. My Instagram is at Jenny, J-E-N-N-I-E, the wolf, W-O-L-F-S. So at Jenny the Wolf, you can feel free to connect with me, send me messages. I know all these awesome faces of Sola want to hear from you too and want to connect with you. Um, we really encourage you to join the Sola family. We do support each other. And I, I've seen just so much back to that picture that we started with of, of all of our 2020 faces of Sola. It was a big um, community effort in, in getting through this last four months and will continue to be as we continue to welcome to new people into our solo family. So thank you guys again so much. We'll end with Stevens, you know, open up, jump, jump and open up that parachute, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye everybody. Oh, and if, if you did were, if you were able to, join but had to come and go this webinar and panel discussion has been recorded and we will send out a link bye. thanks so much guys bye, bye.